Thank you so much. Just a few minutes ago, someone was asking me, do you think you'll be called? I said, yes. <laughs> I have a couple of questions for you. So I have been trying to find a mate, a lover for some time. Yes. Recently, I married. Did you hear the contradiction right in the opening words? He said, I have been trying to find a mate for some time. I have been, I have been trying to find, because this mate is lost, <laughs> a mate for some time. It's all right, because an observation of life experience causes you to, we're just going to sort through this a little and have fun. So just relax because it won't be too painful. Sure. <laughs> we're just going to play with all of you a little bit. So what are the evident beliefs? Finding a mate is not easy or it's easy. Finding a mate happens quickly or takes a long time it's something that you have to try to do or it's something that just comes to you and so this is what we mean by bucking your own current you have beliefs that are working against you and we know Esther argued for what you are experiencing she would say well of course that's what he believes he's been trying to find the missing mate for a long time what do you want from him Abraham and we say we just want you to understand you can't get there from there because every step forward you take your mate just keeps moving I'm trying to find you I'm trying to find you I'm trying to find you It has been like that for some time. <laughs> so the best way to have something that you care about break loose is by taking your attention off of it. Because when you put your attention on it, you practice the vibration that you've got going. So you want to do something to stop that momentum or even better. You want to start a different momentum. So if you would start a different momentum on another subject or just focus upon something else that is working, you would stop the practice of that. And when you stop the practice of something, the momentum of it subsides. And when the momentum subsides, it's much easier then to start off on a new track. In fact, every night while you sleep, the momentum subsides. But for most of you, when you wake up, you just activate the same beliefs again by staying on the same subject again, by offering the same words again and remembering the same things again. And so it's a matter of deciding what you want to keep active and what you don't want to keep active. And the thing, oh, we love you all so much, but you know what you believe? You believe that in order to get what you want, you have to try. And you've been taught that the more you want it, the harder you should try. And the more it's not coming, the more you should try. And it's counterproductive. Because when you really believe that it is not coming, the harder you try, the more it won't come. That's just the way it is, you see. So don't do that anymore. Next. I, so actually there's a little background. Uh, uh, we're sure there's a lot of background. I have... That's the whole point. Beliefs are about background, but what you want is in the foreground. And so if you keep the background activated, the background just keeps coming with you everywhere you go. Come along, come along, doubt and fear. Come along, come along. I don't want to leave you behind. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, let me activate you a little more. You're not quite close enough. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. There, now you're just miserable enough for me. Yeah, here we go. I think I'll go to Can't Find a Mate Anonymous meetings. So I have been practicing meditation and trying to get rid of the negative momentum. I Can't get rid of negative momentum. There's a war against drugs and a war against cancer and a war against AIDS and a war against teenage pregnancy and a war against terrorism and war against terrorism, war against terrorism, war against war against, and all of them are getting bigger because whatever you give your attention to, you practice and attract to yourself until you are part of the statistic, you see. So I'm after he leaves this room, he will never say the word trying again. <laughs> it's like shock. <laughs> We're poking with a stick every time he says trying. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. 
So I met a girl a few months ago through a mutual friend, and I didn't really know her, but for some reason, for work, I got to meet her a few times, and I instantly fell in love with her. It was like you would see love at first sight, or I was like on drugs all the time, all days, <laughs> and I liked each and every little thing about her. I absolutely adored everything. It was like immense power. I felt so powerful that when I envisioned living a life with her,、uh, I could feel that I'm the most powerful man in the world. I went and saw a nine million dollar home. I thought of starting my own startup. It was like everything was in peace, and I spoke with her. Because you came into alignment with your own desire for a while, and then, then I confessed my feelings to her. She said she didn't feel the same way, and I kind of fell out of that vibration. The thing that we really want to emphasize with you, with all of you, such a wonderful experience, is that. That feeling of connecting with your desire, when you felt that elation, you were a perfect vibrational match to the desire that you have been putting into your vortex for this relationship. And so, if you can maintain that longer, what you want must come into a manifested realization. But what happens? When that momentum is short-lived, and the former belief is still available, maybe even readily available, and you act too soon, then the result of your action backfires. That's what we call trying too hard. Backfires because then you began. Immediately to respond to her saying that she did not feel the same way, and then that wonderful bliss went away for you because your bliss was conditional upon her response rather than conditional upon your alignment with what you really want. Now, if we could just convince you, and we can't, you have to find a way of getting it yourself. That if you could maintain that feeling of elation that you were describing. A perfect match to your perfect idea of this perfect mate must show itself to you. It has to be. But everything that you have just described here is exactly what goes with most people about most things. They want something because they don't have it, and the more they don't have it, the more they really, really want it, and then they move into action before the action is really inspired. It would be like. Putting the seed of corn into the ground, knowing that it's going to grow if it's nurtured, knowing that it's going to be something really good to eat in time, but instead going out there about a week later and looking for it, and then just digging it up, and then saying, "Oh, you're not what I expected," because you did not allow the gestation, you did not allow the universal forces, you did not allow. Yourself, because you see, it's really you that ripens. It's really you that readies yourself. Well, I can't really put back that corn seed, can I? I can't really go back to her again now. We haven't spoken more than ten words after that. So what? So what? Out of every bit of contrast comes wonderful clarity, and comes a new bounce, and comes a new intention. And so, for one thing, the intention is. I am so delighted at the idea of someone feeling about me the way I feel about them. In fact, nothing less than that will do. Nothing less than that will do. Won't it be wonderful when someone else gets to hold me as their object of attention and feel that way about me? How good that will be for them! Because oh boy, it was so good for me. How much I appreciate this wonderful girl. That she stood as my object of attention for so many pleasurable thoughts that I offered, and just because her response is not what I wanted right now, it doesn't mean that I cannot continue to hold her or someone else as my object of attention. Clarification, clarification, clarification. 
clarification clarification not only about what you want which may already be clarified we're not quibbling with that at all clarification about my vibrational readiness for that you see because most people and we know it's true of you because you have worked hard you're a really strong focuser you're accustomed to things moving in response to your determination these are all strong attributes of focus but when you have a contradictory vibration and don't know it and you get determined then you attract and repel and attract and repel and attract and repel and attract and repel simultaneously so the repelling the repelling isn't because you're not lovely the repelling is because your vibration insisted that it be there it's vibrational repelling this is not an indictment on who you are this is not because you are flawed and will not find the perfect mate you will you will you will you will you are you are you are you are your vortex always has already has already has already has the repelling is because of the vibrational tug of war that you've got going on that's all and when you stop that oh there will be no repelling you see but the tendency when you don't really understand the laws of the universe is to assume oh something must be wrong with me I am being rejected because I am inappropriate in some way that was the exact thought I had that is not what it is at all first of all you weren't rejected you repelled say to her in your mind it doesn't surprise me that you could not come to me because I was pushing you away as strong as I was trying to call you to me I called and pushed I called and pushed I called and pushed and apparently my pushing was better than my calling because <laughs> off you went but it's all me 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 you see if we could get you to see what we see you'd never worry about this again ever if we could fast forward down the road just a little bit and you could see what comes as a result of this contrast and the clarifying thought processes that you offer you'd be feeling pretty good right now